Hello there and welcome to today's masterclass. As promised from last week's masterclass, today is episode 2 of answering all the questions and all the topics that you submitted for me to talk about. So thank you very much for being here again and tuning in. I'm super excited. Let's dive right into it. The first question that I received that came up quite often is how do we develop a good sound and how can we play with actually a good sound on the instrument all the time? And what is really important, there's a couple steps for me. The first one that is really important is, you know, listen to a lot of different players. That's the first step. In my music library, you know, I have pretty much every CD of all the trombonists out in the world. Every CD of Mr. Christian Lindbergh, Joseph Alessi, Jürgen van Rijn, Ian Bausfield, uh, Alain Trudel, Michel Biquet, the list just goes on and on. So make sure that first of all as a trombonist, go to listen to all the trombonists out there and try to get influenced by that and try to you know, listen for different sounds, figure out what kind of sounds they use and figure out what you actually need and what you really like as a sound. That would be your first step as a trombonist, you know, go through all the different trombonists. If you're a trumpet player, Go through that. Then, what's really important, expand your horizon. Once you've listened to all of that, go to different instrumentalists. As a trombonist, you know, it's really close sounding to a cello to me or to a tenor singer. So I would definitely recommend you go there and listen to that, to those kind of instrumentalists. They have a really close sounding instrument. So try to imitate their sound. Uh, play along recordings, that's always really helped me and try to imitate what they are doing uh, try to create their sound. When you start to become a good copier, then you can create your own sound and kind of develop your ear for it. What is really important in this process of developing your sound is record yourself often. Uh, sometimes it's a little different what you sound like out there compared to what you actually think you sound. Most of the time it's a little bit different, unfortunately. Um, so make sure that you record yourself of self often that way you know how you sound and you know then you can change things up and you can see okay here and there I need to change my sound I need to change the timbre etc how can we develop a good sound so that's kind of the listening part of things but how can we actually do it on this thing here um, there's a couple of exercises that I would recommend first of all you need to know that if you don't play with a good sound at home it's just not going to happen on stage. So you need to practice often and all the time playing with the best possible sound. Every time I pick up this thing here, I really try to give it my best and give it my best sound. That way then it just becomes your default, it becomes your standard. And once you step on stage, it's just normal for you to create the most beautiful sound that you can imagine. Um, therefore, it's really important for me to warm up every day. And the process of that warming up uh, by the way, you can purchase that warm-up package in my website. The link is down below in the description. And the point of that warm-up for me is there's two aspects of it. The first one is to get my air going, to start trusting my air that day, and to let the air do all the job. And then the second really important aspect is that I am in these 45 minutes of warming up, I always try to create the most beautiful sound. In the beginning of the day, it might not be the greatest sound, but by the end of those 45 minutes of warming up, I want to achieve the best possible sound. So that's the process of warming up for me. Then another thing that really helps me with developing my good sound is long tones. There you can really focus on the vibration, open up and create the most beautiful sound you can imagine. relaxed as possible. Take a deep breath and just try to open and rounden your sound. What is really good with long tones, you know, make them start quiet, make them louder, then get quiet again. tricky exercise so try to do it on every uh, tone on the instrument it's really hard to make it you know even sounding 
And then what really also helps me to open up my sound is glissando exercises. Playing scales where you just focus on the air and opening up your sound. all the scales and really just blow a lot of air through your horn and try to open up your sound. Approaching things with glissando always really helps me with that. This already brings me to the next topic. A lot of people ask me about high playing and endurance, building that up. So make sure when you think about endurance and, and high playing, you first of all have to think about this away from the instrument. If you're only exercising and you know running, for example, 10 minutes every day, you're not going to expect from your body to then suddenly run a full marathon. It's just not going to happen. It's the same with the instrument. First of all, if you don't play your instrument every day for a long uh, time of period, it's not going to happen. If you just practice one hour every day, you're not going to survive a two-hour recital. That's just, fortunately, there are no shortcuts for, for building up your endurance. So know that fact. You, know, you need to invest time, you need to practice it. Then treat your lips really well. They are muscles, so I always think about brass playing as kind of like similar to being an athlete. Warm up, cool down, treat them as nicely and best as possible. So that way they can always function at their best. What really helps me with you know, building the range and getting more comfortable in the high register is taking beautiful melodies that I know really well. For example, Bordoni Etudes, Vocalises, and just transpose them into tenor clef, alto clef, or up an octave, for example. When doing this, try to take really relaxed breaths. Be as, you know, try not to have any tension in your playing. Just do it as relaxed as possible. Approach it with a lot of air. When things go wrong, that's totally fine, but approach it with air. And don't take the rhythm too seriously. Take some extra time when you inhale, that way the lips can rest. Is, you know, take some scale, something where you feel comfortable, and again, glissando it up into the high register. Try to approach it with ease. That's definitely going to help you build your endurance and your high register. And then practice up there. I always used to be kind of shy about practicing in the high register. But if I never really practice the high B flat from Bolero, it's just not going to happen. So as soon as I started to practice more in that register, it got better and better. So don't fear it. Try to just incorporate it in your regular playing, uh, in your regular normal practicing. So take exercises that you play in the middle register, just put it up. That way you can approach it the same way as in the middle or in the low register. So make sure you practice up there. When you do exercises like Remington's, for example, up to the high B flat, which I always used to do, well, then your D is not going to be as great. So you need to incorporate practicing up to the D and to the F in your practicing. Good. Now it's time to, to thank all my patrons. Many of them wrote me before that they, are, that they are going to join me and that they're here. I want to thank them for supporting me, for making this event possible. Uh, they're great bunch of people and I really enjoy working with them. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon, down there is a link. You can join the program and you can also support me. We can make these events possible. So please join the program and also please hit the subscription button below. That way you always get notified when I go online and when I upload new videos. Uh, last time it worked so well when I asked this question. 
please over there in the chat write in where you're watching from that's always really really exciting for me to see afterwards where all the people are watching from so just please put it in the comments also i have three more topics to talk about and after that i'm going to open this master club up master class up to a couple of questions i'll pick a couple and i'll i'll answer them so if you have anything that you always want to know please drop it over there in the chat next i got often i got asked pretty often about side reading and i was thinking you know how can i help you with side reading uh, there is unfortunately not many too many shortcuts about that besides doing it often again you know you need to do it often then you get better at it I, I used to be a horrible side reader. You can ask my sisters, my big siblings that helped me uh, when I was little growing up and playing the instrument. They had to pretty much sing everything for me and I copied it then because I was so bad at side reading. Uh, but I just never really did it. I was always so tent, you know, so hesitant to go there and go to an uncomfortable place. So definitely practice your weaknesses. That's something, then you will get better. Um, First of all, when side reading, start a little bit slower. Always stay on the back side of the beat. That really helps. Then, do it often. As I said, you know, go through a lot of... I was really fortunate with my teachers, Danny Bonvin and then Joseph Alessi. I went through a lot of etude books. So when you do that, when you have to present new etudes every week to your teacher, you will have to side read quite often. So try to make yourself challenges. I made up this own challenge for myself at some point during my studies that every day I side read a new etude. I recorded it and then I listened back to it and I tried to figure out what common mistakes are, what things are that I do often wrong. So make yourself challenges like that and do it often. Start slow and then look at the tempo marking what it says and really focus on the rhythm, on the tempo and on you know subdivisions it always really helps to think about subdivisions if you have the rhythm correct that's already a really great starting point then the notes you know you look at the melody we're better at playing melodies usually so things will unfold with the melody but if your rhythm is off that makes the listener just kind of thrown off so try to focus on the rhythm and on subdivisions good then i got asked how should we build a career and especially then building a career as a soloist um, i don't really have any strategies for that i unfortunately don't have too many tips about that because it just really happens uh, there's nothing that you can really plan that you can yes you have to be goal oriented but you can't really plan it because it's not going to work out if you just force it or if you plan it yourself um, so there's not really a plan to it but there's a couple of things that you can you know look at First of all, try to be a nice, kind, and especially respectful person to others. Um, nobody likes divas. Nobody likes people that are not nice. Uh, you're much more likely to hire somebody or to ask somebody for a gig to play with you if the person is nice. If the person is not nice and great to work with, it's not, just not going to work out so well. So first of all, try to be nice and be kind. That really always helps. Uh, network, you know. So many of my colleagues or student friends that I studied with, they are professionals now and they hire me for concerts or they hire me to play with them or they ask me to give master classes. So network. Everybody that you meet, you will probably meet again at some point in this music business. So always network. There's so many great tools now. I'm giving a master class on YouTube right now, so I'm networking. I'm connecting with others. Uh, Instagram, Patreon, there's so many great things to, to connect with. So always network. That's really, really, really important. Focus on quality. Quality always needs to go first. It's not the talking that will do the job. It's what comes out of your bell. Let the sound speak for itself. You don't really have to talk much more when you sound great. So go for quality. Quality will stand out and you will get hired if there is quality. So make sure that is the quality quality when you play something fast it has to be quality don't just go for showing off it has to be quality and then last but not least for me this is really a struggle for me personally be patient i'm not a real good patient person i always want to make things happen immediately i have an idea now and then 10 minutes later it needs to be done um, and that's you know i'm goal oriented but it makes life a little bit harder when you're not super patient so try to become better at it. I'm working on it every day, 
try to really, you know, let things unfold. Again, if quality is there, things will unfold. All right. And then the last topic that I got asked so often, and I, you know, I'm not so really into answering this question, but, you know, we talk about it all the time. It's COVID and how COVID has changed my life. If there's things that, you know, affected it positively, for example. And first of all, you know, it was a big change of pace for me. I used to travel around the world all the time. Uh, this is the first time in many years, in, yeah, many years that I don't play a concert pretty much every day or a recital every third day. So it's been a big change of pace. Uh, I've been home for nine months now, which has been actually quite great. Uh, I've had a lot of chance to practice, which is my favorite thing to do, uh, as you can probably tell from all my videos. I practice a lot and I really enjoy doing that. I like to tweak things, I like to get better. And you know, when you're on tour all the time and when you perform a concert every day, uh, your technique is not going to get better and things are just going to not get as much better as you want it to be. So I've actually really appreciated the time to, 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 to practice and to tweak things and to get better. I think I'm a much better player now than nine months ago. So that is something I really enjoy. Uh, during this time, I also recorded a new album with Constanze together. Uh, it's a new album with Oregon. We dropped already a uh, single last month and one is coming next Friday. So make sure to tune in for that. Uh, it's a new, really cool album. A lot of new music that was... Not really new, it's all written for orchestra and we adapted it for organ and trombone. I think a couple of guys from the recording crew are also online here and checking this out. So definitely worth checking out a new project. Uh, yeah, so I've done really many new projects and one really cool thing about it is that now I had the time to write things down for the first time, like my warm up and I've created this Patreon uh, page where you know all these patrons are supporting me and making this event possible. I never had the ch time beforehand to make this happen. You know, to to build my own studio. I have kind of my own online studio of students now that I see on a regular basis, which is really cool. I really enjoy working with them. So that's definitely something positive. I always like to to look at things positively. There's many negative aspects about it, which you can read in the newspaper. Horrible things happening out in the world, but I try to look at the bright side of things. But I'm also really looking forward to just, you know, going back, going back to regular life and performing again. Performing for you, not, you know, not giving these masterclasses online, but actually giving them for you in person. That would be something fun again and performing much more. I really miss that. But I think we are, we are getting there hopefully soon. So things will hopefully be back. All right, this is it for the topics that I wanted to talk about. Let me look really quickly at questions that you submitted here. What exercises, Tristan asked me, what exercises do you recommend after long practice to do every day to be ready for the next day? Um, especially low register is something that really, really helps me to, to kind of help the lips to relax something I didn't really mention before, when you work on endurance and high lips, also connected with working on your low chops. That's really important. So I would do just, you know, first of all, again, start with glissandos to really let your lips relax. recommend do something in the low register just some simple slurs or just go just go lower and lower and lower long tones really help me after a long practice day Schlossberg book is really helpful. A lot of long tones in there connected with slurs. Uh, so those are definitely things that I do at the end of a long practice day, cool down session, long notes, low practicing. Uh, 
everybody's a little different, everybody's embouchure is a little different, so do whatever makes you feel the best. Figure that out, sit down and do that. What really helps me also at the end of the day, you know, most of the day now in the winter, it's a little different, it also depends on the place where you live, but the day is bright, the sun is out, it's always kind of bright. I really like to end the day with just the lights completely shut off and just me and the trombone kind of relaxing, like a yoga session. That's something really cool, meditation. Once I do that for about 20 minutes, my lips kind of tickle and it just feels really great. And then the next day, I'm ready to go at it again. Good question. Next one. When you play flexibilities, I see your mouthpiece sliding up and down your lip when you go high to low. How does it happen so smoothly? <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's just practice, practice, practice. But start in the middle register and start to get going with your flexibility. Add higher notes, that way you have to shift around a little bit more. So do flexibilities where you have to go across the registers. Then your embouchure will get quicker and quicker at shifting from embouchure. We all have different breaks in our, in our lips where we have to swish, switch and shift around. So once you figure those out where you have to shift, then do exercises where you really have to go across that border. Another exercise is this. shifts again practice practice otherwise it's not going to happen but a lot of flexibilities around that register certainly will help we have another question oh they are coming in sorry 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 I have to figure them out here do you have any advice for exercises for embouchure shifts and range connections that was what I just talked about I think these exercises especially the Remingtons where you do and then add partial. Also reverse the exercise. So that should definitely help. I would always go to simple things. I'm not a really big fan of doing you know, crazy flexibility exercises uh, because we don't really you know, help. Yes, if you have a great fast flexibility, that's impressive. And yeah, that's cool. But if you start slow and do simple things, you're eventually going to get quicker anyways. So no need to do super crazy stuff and then struggle with just simple connections. Another exercise that I do quite often is Again, all these exercises I'm doing, definitely do them in all positions. I'm just showing it now for, for the sake of time on one position. How do you deal with practicing when you have lots of rehearsals? Ah, that's a tricky one. Um, when you have lots of rehearsals, Definitely fit practice sessions in between the rehearsals. You can check out the previous masterclass, episode number two. I talked about how to structure your practicing. Um, but I would always, you know, I, I'm again, I'm a practicer. So I sometimes I had, you know, morning rehearsals with the orchestra. And then in the afternoon I was free. So I practiced then and I also warmed up before the rehearsal. So I tried to really fit them all in. Uh, try not to, you know, hurt your lips. Definitely be smart about it. Um, there's, there's three levels of comfortable feeling. There's the green, green zone, green lips, where everything just feels amazing. Then there is, you know, yellow, orange, where you're kind of getting into danger zone, but everything is still working. And then there's red zone, 
then when really you're you're pinching things out, you're just relying on your lips and your muscle. Definitely don't go to that spot. I used to go to that spot way too often and you know kind of damages your lips and they don't feel great anymore. So just try to touch your 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 yellow level every day. That's also how you build up endurance. Touch your level of yellow every day and then that level will go further and further away. Uh, so you know put in these practice sessions in between rehearsals. Also you can do some practicing away from the horn. When you're a trombonist and you sit in orchestra, there's sometimes time of the rehearsal where you just sit there for an hour, an hour and a half. I've had that quite often. You can do some practicing while you sit there. Do some breathing exercises. Nobody will notice that you're doing that. Um, you know, do some memorizing. Uh, nobody will no notice that, you know. Slide, slide in your brain mentally your etudes if you memorize them, your recital program. So you can do practicing away from the instrument where nobody will notice that you're actually practicing. So try to go for things like that. Uh, do you use buzzing? Yes, I buzz every day. First thing that I do every day after my, it's part of my warm up, after I do my breathing exercises, I go to buzzing. Free buzz first, then I buzz in the mouthpiece, and then I buzz with a lead pipe. So mouthpiece and lead pipe. I'm a strong believer, again, I compare trombone playing or brass playing to being an athlete. So I really believe in warming up every part of, you know, what you need in your playing. So the first thing I warm up are my lungs, my air, my breathing. Then I need to, to warm up my lips. To me, it doesn't feel great if I just pick up the instrument and I play. I just don't feel really ready. Maybe that's because I'm not really a morning person. But I really buzz and buzzing also helps me to fix certain things in certain issues in my playing. For example, lyricism, pordonis or high register connections sometimes. If you just take the moment, put the horn away and just buzz that section, for example, uh, middle section of David Concerto. <laughs> time I buzz, I always try to connect everything with a glissando. Never make air space in between glissando to gather everything. Yes, I buzz. Uh, how can I work on playing with more expression and emotion? Uh, that's something that you will develop over time, you know, as, you know, going back to the first thing that I talked about today, sound, Listening to a lot of recordings, that really helps you to find out how musicians express themselves. Um, so try to, first of all, listen to the recordings and try to copy that. Then you will find already ways of expressing yourself by just copying them or following them along in the recording. Then try to imagine a singer. That's always a go-to for me. Sound-wise, I always imagine a singer. And then phrase-wise and you know, emotion-wise, I always try to just sing through my horn. The trombone is just an extension of my thought and my trying to be a super singer. I suck at singing, so that's why I have the trombone in my hand. Um, and then go to melodies and things that you like playing. Try to play them as expressive as possible. Record, listen back if it was where you wanted to go. Um, one thing that is really helpful when you do auditions or competitions or just play recitals in general, um, always exaggerate. We tend to, on stage, be kind of hiding and not going for it. If you exaggerate, things will go, get across. So exaggerate your dynamics, your articulations and your expressiveness. Then things will come across to the listener. So, yeah, I would certainly recommend that. What mouthpiece do you play and what size is it? I, that's a good question. I'm using a Willys mouthpiece. It actually has my name on it that's pretty cool something that i always never really dreamed of but it just kind of happened and i'm really happy about that uh it's my willies and gut tuned steiner mouthpiece my signature model and i play a, a four size mouthpiece uh that just feels really comfortable actually many people ask me about these mouthpieces since i just received them last week and i posted about it um they actually come in these 
at least I got them in these three different colors, so regular silver plating, then rose gold plating, and then just regular gold plating. As you can see, all my rims are silver. I prefer a silver rim over a gold rim, Just feels just better on my lips. And they all have a little different feel to it, since, you know, first they plated gold and then the silver rim comes on top of it, so they all feel a little bit different in the inside. They are all exact same size. Uh, just the blading feels a little bit different and they have different different ring and different overtones to it. So I found that the gold one, to me at least, I've been experimenting with these three mouthpieces. Uh, the gold one to me sounds the smoothest, the widest sound, the most creamy sound. Um, I really like on the rose gold one that it has a lot of overtones. You know, a lot of copper always gives me more overtones to me personally. So I'm experimenting around, but so far I really, really, really like this one. So that's my mouthpiece, Willy's from Japan. Um, trills, good question, but not today. I'll do, as I said, now this is the last uh, masterclass for this year. And uh, this is a one where I talk more. And then next month, next year, I'll... I'll set up new masterclasses where I'll talk about specific topics. You guys have submitted many topics like trills, high register, flexibility, double tongue, triple tongue, etc. So I'll post and make, make up new masterclasses topic related. That way we can focus for one masterclass on just one thing. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Sorry, I, I won't answer that yet. How can I improve my articulation in the high register? Scales are something that really helps in the high register. Uh, again, go to simple things where you don't have to focus on too many aspects, but where you can actually just focus on, on the thing that you want to figure out at that point. Articulation, I would go, don't tongue too hard. Make sure when you articulate that there's always air behind. So for example, if I just articulate really hard with a tongue, and I cannot get that, that sound and I don't really enjoy that. So fill it up, you know, the front is good, the front of the note has to be in sync with the air, tongue and air at the same time, but then give the note some body. And then when you go up in the high register, do the exact same thing. Make sure that there is enough air in there and that you focus actually on the air, even though you're working articulation. Simple exercises like that, that way you can focus on that. Also the Remingtons I did before, you're working already on your articulation. <laughs> Make up your own exercises, try to approach them as relaxed as possible, focus on the air behind the tongue, and then, you know, over time it will get better and better. Um, thoughts on tenor switching to bass? Um, I, I grew up being a bass trombonist, actually, not many people know that. Um, so for me, it was kind of the reversed order. I played for, uh, first played bass and then I went to tenor. Um, but I, I like to, you know, as, at some point I had to decide which one I'm going to go for. Yes, there is, you know, positions in the orchestra, Wechsel, Posaune, where you have to play both. The position asks for playing tenor and bass, um, which normally just people that are good at switching around go for. But in general, I recommend just going for one instrument. Uh, sometimes I have students that play euphonium and trombone. I just recommend them go with one instrument. If you want to be good at something, focus on one aspect and then, you know, for fun, you can do the other. So I recommend just going for one instrument. I think that it's something to focus on. There's enough to focus on if you just want to get for one instrument. All right, I think we are ready for the last question of today. Which trombone do you play now? Ah, that's a good question. I'm not going to answer that now. Stay tuned. There's I think the new year will bring some new infos on that. Uh, maybe the first couple of days, uh, there's something planned in the new year. Uh, make sure to check in back. I'll talk about it. And there is it's definitely not this one here. I'm working on a prototype, a site with a brand. 
I'm going to announce what it is soon. Uh, you just have to wait one more month. So stay there. I'll go to another question. I think, no, I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, good questions. Thank you very much for asking all of that. Again, thank you very much for supporting. If you want to become a Patreon, down there is a link for me to, for you to support me. Uh, and again, thank you very much for being here. Uh, please share it all over the world. Again, thank you very much for everybody to tune in. I saw Japan, I saw Russia, I saw Italy, so many different places. And yeah, now it's just my time to really wish you a hopefully great holiday season. Enjoy this time of the year. Hopefully you have some snow. Uh, make some music with your friends, with your family, play some nice tunes and really just enjoy this time of the year. Again, thank you very much for being here and I'll see you in the new year. Bye-bye. Thank you.